So guys, you're probably looking at this thinking, what is Jan doing? Is he posing for a painting? The truth is no. This is gonna be me for probably the next 13 weeks or so. I can't walk, I can't pretty much stand. Um, but anyway, this is the story of telling you what has happened in my life over the last few weeks. If you've got anxiety, you could relate to this. Like, I can't breathe, please send me an ambulance. Yeah, I'm like, ah! I've been on every tablet you can possibly imagine. Lying on the bed, <sighs> shut your mouth, man up. It's like you're in a coffin and you're just enclosed in and you're alive. Believe me, it's not just muscle spasm. If any of you want to paint me, feel free. This is where I'm going to be for a long time. Right now I am on a serious amount of drugs from diazepam, morphine, cocodamol, yeah, you name it, I am, I'm, I'm high as a kite, shall we say. So what has happened? I haven't posted on my Instagram in about 10 days, and for me that is weird, because I post every day, I do stories and everything else. I actually posted a picture of me and my daughter by accident. So I put it up as a story and then I realized you could see the, I think it's a cannula in my hand and you could see the backdrop. It looked like I was in a hospital bed and then a few DMs started coming through and I was like, uh-oh, and I quickly deleted it. And then I must have had 50, 60, 70 DMs come through by the time I deleted it. So what has happened? About 14 days ago, it was hot and I slept with my window open, which probably most of us do. You know, sometimes like the air comes in, your back gets a bit of a cold, you wake up in the morning, you're a bit like, oh, I'm a bit stiff, oh, that, was, that was a bit sore. Anyway, I didn't think nothing much of it. I just continued on my life. I've been boxing, so I've been really into my boxing at the moment, really trying to get myself fit, looking to fight. So I went boxing again, my back was a bit sore, but nothing to worry me about. I had a couple of neurofins, but again, weren't too bothered about it. As the day went on, my back was getting a little bit more and more sore, um, and I had things in my diary planned. So I had Carwell. When I go race at Carwell, I have to do a two hour journey to get to where we need to go. Then I spend six hours in a car racing. So obviously we're racing up and down. And that was the Bugatti video that just came out recently with the Tesla Plaid. I mean, again, in the car a long time, then I had to do a two hour journey back. So my back was really, really playing up. I then got a message from a friend of mine called George saying, listen, do you fancy playing football tonight? I thought, you know what? I haven't played football in a while since I broke my leg. You know, I'll be interested. Again, my back's in pain, but not, over the top in pain i'm thinking yeah don't do that don't do that the pain was on the left side so it was on my leg and the lower part so all the pain was down the left side of my body so the right side of my body is fine but the left side of my body is where all the pain was so i play football again in a bit of a pain but i'm okay so i come home have a shower and as soon as i have the shower the pain goes from like a level three to a ten which is the maximum pain you can possibly imagine. I crawl myself into bed because I literally can't move. And I take a couple of Nurofen and I think to myself, you know what, have the tablets in the morning, you'll be fine. One o'clock in the morning, I wake up, lying on my back and I'm like, I can't move. I can't get out of bed. I can't do anything. So it's one o'clock in the morning, don't want to wake anyone up. So I'm just a soldier through, a big man, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like a man gets man flu and stuff. So soldier through. And about six in the morning, still can't move. And I think, okay, you know, let me, let me at least try and go toilet. I can't get out of bed. My bed's here. My toilet is just, just there. It's not far away. Can't get out of bed. So I'm thinking, yeah, I have a big problem here. Picture the worst pain in the world. That is what I've got. Anyway, so this was on the Tuesday. My family are here. They're giving me tablets. You'll be okay, yeah, and you'll be okay. Just more and more tablets. Can't go to the toilet. So I'll be honest with you. My son chops a, one of these bottles, the top of it off. And obviously I have to pee in the bottle because I can't get to the toilet. So I called a friend of mine who's a private doctor. And he said, listen, let me send you some tablets. No matter what tablets he sent me, the pain would not go. So that's on the Tuesday, Wednesday, same thing, Thursday, same thing. Friday morning, I woke up and I was like, enough's enough, I need to go to hospital. My wife was like, you need to go to hospital, it's, it's, it's enough, like, enough. The problem I've got is, I can't move. So what do we do, we call 111. I say, this is my situation. Are you breathing? Yes. Can you breathe? Yes. Do you have any breathing issues? No. Well, there's not really much we can help you with. But I can't move, I can't get out of my bed. I can't go to the toilet. I can't literally do anything. Yes, but you can breathe. But I can't leave my bed. Nothing we can help you with. So I ring 999. Can you send me an ambulance? Again, same questions. 
Can you breathe? Do you have any tingling in your toes? Do you have any chest pains? No, and obviously I'm honest. Like I could have lied and said, oh, I can't breathe. Please send me an ambulance. I was honest. Yeah, we're not sending you an ambulance. So I dragged myself screaming down the stairs. What I worked out is I could stand for probably a 15, 20 second window. So I could stand up, move, and then the pain would kick in. I've got to quickly lie down. So as long as I'm lying down or my legs got support underneath it, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm not in a bad position, I'm not in a bad place. So I crawl myself into the back of the car, lying into the back of the car. So I get to Spiney Hospital, she goes in and speaks to them. They're like, well, not really much we can do. He hasn't come in by ambulance. Luckily, we see a friend of ours called Andreas, then he was like, I'll sort it out, don't worry. So I can't sit up, and the only thing I can do is lie down. So they bring me out of a trolley, and they were like trying to help me out, I'm like, I can't get out. I said, so you're just gonna have to just bear with me for about 30 seconds, I'm just gonna get out and just scream my head off. So I just get, I'm like, ah, this, and I get on the bed, lying on the bed, <sighs> breathing like this, like I'm pregnant. They rush me through, give me morphine, give me a load of tablets, nothing is working. First the doctor sees me, he's like, yeah, it just seems like it's probably just a muscle, muscle spasm, nothing major. It's not the end of the world. Um, you'll be fine. We'll just give you a load more tablets and we'll just send you home. And I'm like, Doc, this, this is more than muscle spasm. There's a problem here. Listen, we'll give you tablets. You'll be fine. I'm like, I've been on every tablet you can possibly imagine. Believe me, it's not just muscle spasm. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to send you home. Okay, fine. Another doctor comes and sees me. I explained to him what's happening with regards to my leg and my back and what they do is they, they'll touch your toes and they, they touch and they're like can you feel this can you feel this can you feel this can you feel this if i do this if i do this can you go toilet on your own if i couldn't control my bowels they would have been like you need to give them an mri scan straight away but because i could control everything and it was just my back and, and my just my whole left side of my body they were like yeah no he's fine but this doctor was like no there's something wrong with you it could be a blood clot or it could be um, a nerve or something in your back. We need to give you an MRI scan. We're going to admit you. We need to admit you into hospital. So they admit him into hospital, put me into a ward. So I'm there. They give me again loads and loads of tablets. So I'm drugged out of my absolute nuts. And I don't know what I'm saying. I know I'm sending people voice notes and I'm slurring my words. And God, you know, you know when you're just out of it. And you got to remember, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't do anything. So for me, it's magnified by a million when I'm on anything. <laughs> so, and people are laughing at me saying, Jan, what are you saying? You know, like this bad boy's like, you know, that's, that's, that's a big, that fish got big eyes. That's a big fish. <laughs> anyway, doctor wakes me up at one o'clock in the morning, gives me more medicine, and listen, we're gonna give you an MRI scan. You don't theoretically qualify for an MRI scan because the certain things that we've tested on you that you don't qualify. We only have one MRI scan in Barnet, but you know what? We're gonna give you one. So I was like, you know what, thank God, thank you. At eight o'clock in the morning, I get woken up again. It's the senior doctor to the one that saw me earlier on. To be honest, he was a bit, oh yeah, done your back in, have you mate? Blah, 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 like, like it was a nothing. I was like, okay, and I'm just keeping my call. But again, I'm in hospital, I'm in, I'm in his house. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna respect the fact of where I am and obviously I, I need to get, get help. He's like, yeah, we're not giving you an MRI scan. I'm like, why is that? You don't qualify. You haven't got tingling in your things. You're not and in yourself. So I said, so if I and shit myself in the bed, you'll give me an MRI scan. Is that what you're saying to me? And a part of me was like, maybe I should just do that then. The way it was, it was just blase. Like, yeah, you're not getting an MRI scan. We'll just give you more and more tablets. You'll be fine. The following morning, the same doctor's come to see me and I'm looked at him and I'm like, here we go. And he's like, we're going to give you an MRI scan. I was like, really? How come? He goes, there is obviously an issue here. So we're going to give you one. So I'm like, Okay, cool. Now, I don't know if you've ever had an MRI scan before. It's weird. You go into like a container, like a tube, and it's very small. And what's weird is me and Daniel were having a conversation, shout out Asheville, about this a few months back where he had an MRI scan. And now I'm, I'm big, I'm six foot two, I'm, I'm, I'm big frame. Daniel's six foot five and a much bigger frame than me. And he said to me, when he went in there, he goes, he felt really claustrophobic. Now, I'm not a guy that gets really claustrophobic. And he goes, I got in there, and he goes, and it was a smaller version. He goes, I was in there, my shoulders were touching the sides, and, and you've got to stay in there for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on what the MRI scan they're doing on you. And he goes, and I started panicking, I started getting hot, and I started like doing this and lifting my arms. And the problem is, when you're in there, you're, you're, you're confined to this, because obviously it's all around you, 
and he goes, and all of a sudden you can hear it's crack, 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 crack. And they're like, stop doing that. What are you doing? He goes, you need to get me out. You need to get me out. And he was like, crack, 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 crack. And they got him out, but he literally cracked the machine. So that's in my mind. So I'm now thinking about that. Anyway, so they've put me in the machine. They've, they've wheeled me in and I'm lying there. And obviously it's quite tight on me. And I'm looking and I'm like, I can't really see nothing. You've got a buzzer in your hand. He goes, you can push this buzzer if you need me. So I'm like, okay. I said, how am I in here for? He goes, maybe, maybe 30 minutes. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm in there and I'm looking around. I'm like, do I have my eyes shut? Do I have my eyes open? And all I can think about is Daniel and what he said to me. So now I'm starting to get anxiety and I'm starting to panic now in this thing. I'm lying there and you can hear the, the noises and you're wearing headphones and it's and the, the noises are going, it's going mad, it's going crazy. I hit the buzzer and he was like, everything okay? And I'm like, how long have I got left? He goes, uh, 17 minutes. Oh my God, that, that feels like a lifetime. So I'm in there and I'm like, okay, panic, panic. You kept saying you wanted an MRI scan, you wanted an MRI scan. Everyone told you that you'd spoke to friends of yours that a doctor said you need to get an MRI scan. You've now got one, shut your mouth, man up and do it. Uh, I hit the button again. How long have I got left? 12 minutes. I'm thinking, I've got to get through this. I've, I've, I've got to get through this. Honestly, I'm now panicking. I can feel myself getting hot and I can feel myself starting to stress out. And I'm thinking, if I don't do this, they're going to make me do it again. It feels like I'm just getting closed in. And if you've got anxiety, you can relate to this. And you're probably thinking, oh my God, like that would be my worst nightmare. Being, it's like you're in a coffin and you're just being closed in and you're alive. Again, hit the button. How long left? You've got two minutes, sir. Just two minutes. Don't worry. Okay, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. All of a sudden, I hear all the noises stop. They wheel me back out. And I'm like, take my headphones off. I move my arms around like this. And, Okay, I said, is it all done? They're like, yeah, you're all done. So they slide me across to another bed because again, I can't, I can't really move. So anyway, so I get the MRI scan done. I've got a swelling in my spine. And obviously you can see what it says there. It's about L3 and L4, which is your, your different levels of your, your spine. I, I don't know too much about it, but there, there's the write-up. Luckily it hasn't exploded because if it explodes, you'd need, you need an operation. Now I'm private. So people think, well, you're private. Why don't you just go private and give me your MRI scan? Now, the joys about being private is that you need to see a GP. The problem is I couldn't walk and I couldn't move. So how am I supposed to see a GP? Then they said, okay, if you can't see a GP, just go and see a specialist and they will recommend you and then you can just go get your MRI scan. Again, I can't walk. I can't move. What am I supposed to do? Eventually, Axel was like, you've now had your MRI scan. We can move you to... King's Oak or um, Cavell or whatever hospital in central London where they were like, we'll do a proper check on you. So I was like, okay, if you move me, what are they gonna do? They said, they're just gonna give you more and more tablets, have a bit of physio and I'm like, you know what, I'm not doing it, I wanna go home. So I discharged myself from Barnet. So that's it, I'm on my way out. Man like Odie, wheeling me out, still can't walk, still can't stand. But going home, there's no place to stay in here. Managed to get myself home and I've been home ever since, but still in pain. I can stand, I can walk around, but literally within two or three minutes, I'm like, I've got to lie down. And I lie down like this. And as long as I lie down like this, and I'm like, okay, breathe, 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 breathe. I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to recover. I have got so much work to do. I've got so much stuff to do. And people are like, it's work, don't worry about it. And that is what's happened to me in these last 10, 14 days. Health is wealth. My physio that I went to see, Dr. Eunice, said to me, Yanni, it's like an MOT. He goes, and, and he uses the car, because obviously I'm a car guy. And I was like, yeah, and your car goes for an MOT. And why does it go for an MOT? Because it needs a checkup. And it might need oil, or it might need brakes, or it might need um, windscreen wipers changed. And that is the same with your body. So you need to put the correct things in your body and your body needs to be checked on a regular basis. And there's a lot of guys that, that follow me. And whether you think you're in good shape, whether you're slim, whether you're fat, just because you're slim doesn't mean that your body is perfect. You could sneeze and you pull your back out. It can happen at any time, any day, any moment. So pay attention to what is going on. And your body will tell you. Your body will tell you. Listen, my body told me I had a problem and me being the hero that I am was like, you know what, I'm cool, I'm gonna still go and play football. If I didn't go and play football that Monday, would I be in this situation? Probably not. I still, I think, would have an issue, but not to the level that I would be in right now when I wouldn't have had to go to hospital and have all these MRI scans and all these tablets. So your body will tell you when there's an issue 
And if your body's telling you something, you need to listen, pay attention, and do something about it. Mentally, I had good days and bad days. Some days I was up and I was flying and I was good. Um, but when my mum rings me, I've got to put on a brave face and it's your mum in it. So your mum will ring and I was just like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, mum, cool. So I'm fine. She goes, are you sure you're down? Do you want me to come to your house? Do you want me to, do you want me to do anything for, for you? And I'll come and like, I'll move. And I'm like, mum, I'm fine. I'm fine. And as much as I'm saying that, I could be having a really, really bad day and down day. And then my friend will turn up to my house and totally change my mindset and how I think. And we'll crack jokes and we'll talk about stupid things. Like Rue came and saw me the other day and we just chatted about different things. Nothing to do with my back and nothing to do with me getting better. And, and then Daniel will come and he'll just chat the utmost amount of rubbish. And those are what's important to you because when you're on your own, and you're in your own thoughts, that is when it's, wow, well, okay, you're, you're stuck. You understand? And yeah, you have your kids and you have your family and stuff. It's still difficult. My oldest son, to be fair to him, he, he was really good. He was really good for me. And my youngest, he would come to the hospital. Everyone was good for me, including my wife. Also my friends, Simon, Nathan, Andrew, Ivan, Manny, and Bav, who, <laughs> when I try to talk business with him, these are the sort of messages he replies with. Can you just get better? That's the last thing you need to worry about. I'm not sending you my bank details. Just get better. Um, that's the main priority. Bank details, you lunatic. <laughs> A special mention to Kieran who literally dropped everything on day one to come and see me when I was in so much pain when I had no idea what was going on. He actually calmed me down um, and reassured me he's a professional physio for Premiership Football Club. So thank you so much. Shout out to all of you. And I appreciate everything that, that you lot have all done for me and helped me get through to this stage. I'm still not where I need to be. I still can't walk. I still... Yeah, I still can't drive. They reckon recovery can take 13 or 14 weeks. Um, and I'm sure you guys are going to watch it and say, no, that's not true. It's going to be less. But anyway, I'm ending this video now. Hopefully, I'll start walking again soon and be able to start getting some more content out. Thank you to the followers. Thank you for you guys at home. It's always appreciated that you lot send me love and send me DMs. And, and I do read the messages and um, it's important to me. So thank you to you, thank you to my family, thank you to my friends. And I guess I'll see you on the next video and hopefully I won't be lying here like a plonker. See you later, take care.